Hi everyone, Sam is here. Uh, I promised you in my last video that I'm going to speak about uh, the correlation between uh, body weight and hormones. But in fact, lately I got uh, a lot of messages asking me about what is the convenient diet for ulcerative colitis disease. So I find there is a priority for to speak about that subject more than the body weight. So I uh, promise you in my next video, I'm going to speak about the hormone and body weight. And today I'm going to speak about ulcerative colitis diet. We all inherited our genetics from our parents and grandparents, and we may carry bad gene in our system. And this bad gene, it will appear on the surface or it will uh, be formed as a disease if we are in a certain cir circumstances such as pollution, stress, bad food. S pollution and stress, maybe we don't have control on them. We need to deal with them. But we have 100% control on food. This is what we eat, what we put in our body. So we have 100% control of what we put inside our body. Just to go directly to the point, because we have a lot of things to cover. The diagnosis of the ulcerative colitis, it's inflammation in the colon caused by the immune system. Ulcerative colitis, it's one of the immune system diseases. When we eat the wrong food, we aggravate the immune system. In immune system, instead of protecting us, it attacks us. Why? When we eat the wrong food, our body gets an aggravated, it will send a signal by mistake. It will give the wrong signal to the immune system. Save me. I have microbe in this area. The immune system doesn't, doesn't think. It will obey the order and it will attack directly. During this attack, it will create the inflammation. On the long term, when we eat the wrong food continuously, we increase the inflammation level in our body. Inflammation, when it increases, it will lead to ulcers and ulcer it will lead to bleeding let's go to the point and see what type of food we have to eliminate we have to stop we have to remove from our food list to eliminate the aggravation to the immune system or to reduce the inflammation in our body number one is sugar sugar doesn't only inflame the colon but also it will inflame the whole body it will inflame your joint you will have joint pain, you will have arthritis, you will have inflammation in your nerve system and inflammation in the nerve system, it will lead to Alzheimer disease because nerve system is connected with the brain. On the long term, if you will continue eating the same wrong food, some same sugar, you will create ulcerative colitis, arthritis, nerve system uh, uh, inflammation and Alzheimer disease. So number one, poison you have to avoid is sugar. Number two, grains. Grains, we know that it's a good source of fibers and source of energy because it's carbohydrates. But we need to know also that grains contain two bad elements for human health, lectin and gluten. In the past, when God created universe and created the earth, the first thing that he created plants. At that time, plants were safe. But when he created humans and animals, animals and, hu and humans to live, they have to eat. So they started to eat the plant. Plants, they don't have the ability to defend themselves. They don't have the ability to run or hide. They are planted in the ground. So they created and manufactured two elements, lectin and gluten, to defend themselves. Those two elements are poison. Because they created this against the predators they don't want to be eaten so when we eat grains we have the lectin and gluten come to our digestive system and it will inflame our system gluten and lectin when they reach the colon we have in our colon pores these pores to absorb the liquid water uh, minerals vitamins and insert it in the bloodstream these pores are very tiny, but when we eat the lectin and gluten, they make these pores wider and bigger. So they become like open door. And when you open the door widely, 
you are prone to get in your bloodstream a lot of bad things toxics microbes bad bacteria and undigested food when this undigested food and other bad elements come to in your bloodstream your body will be alert as there is a microbe came into your system so it will send directly a signal to the immune system save me i have microbe in this area the immune system doesn't think it will act and, and obey the order directly and it will send the army to defend the body by mistake during the attack from the immune system to this area it would attack also the colon tissues and it will create inflammation and inflammation on the long term because we eat the same food daily inflammation with it will increase and it will lead to ulcers and ulcers will lead to bleeding number three legumes legumes are plant the same system plants they don't want to be eaten against predators they created lectin full of lectin but also on the top of the lectin they have also something else it's called enzyme inhibitor we have enzymes our in our system in our digestive system to pre break down the food and digest it legumes they have enzyme inhibitor something to block the enzyme so we cannot digest it and break it down that's why when we eat legumes we get bloated because the food is not digested after the bloating bad bacteria will be activated and ferment the food food fermented fermentation in your system you put your system in a risk number four milk we are not designed to drink milk why because milk has two bad elements lactose and casein lactose which is the milk sugar casein it's the milk protein we are not designed to digest both of those two elements god created the special enzymes in the calf the baby cow when the cow nurses her child her baby calf it will nurse the calf for one year two years and after that he will stop eating milk and we will start to eat grass same as we did when we were children we were nursing from our mothers for one year to year and then we started to eat solid food so when we drink milk we enter in our system the lactose and the casein and because we don't have the enzymes to break them down we keep them in our system as is as they are and we get inflamed vegetable oil vegetable oil are very oils in general are very dangerous for the health why because they are rich in omega-6 omega-6 it increases the inflammation level in your body number two most of the people they use vegetable oil for cooking when you expose the vegetable oil to heat you dissolve it and you convert it into trans fat trans fat it will block the arteries in your heart so you don't only hurt your colon but also you hurt your cardio cardiovascular system you hurt your heart last thing number six nightshade vegetables night shade vegetables are five white potato tomato cucumber eggplant, eggplant and bell pepper white potato has no solution i advise you to stop eating right immediately right now the other four things like bell pepper tomato cucumber and eggplant they have lectin but we can eliminate the lectin by peeling them if you peel the skin and remove the seeds you are safe toxics and pollution this is one the second element so toxics and pollution are everywhere in the air in the food in the water either you accept or don't accept you will deal with it it will come inside your body cookware cookware we have i will speak about it in details later in the next page there are some cookware we have to eliminate from our kitchen and other cookware are safe we need to use pesticides pesticides are very dangerous for the health why they are not only a poison they mutate our genes they change the nature of our genetics so even if you have good genetics and you eat food 
sprayed with pesticides, you are prone to mutated genes. Your genes will be converted and becomes bad gene. And you may get hurt, you may get disease. One of the disease, disease, diseases is ulcerative colitis and leaky gut. Makeup and cosmetics for women. Makeup and cosmetics factories for cosmetics, they combine the product with aluminum and sulfate and other metal components to make the cosmetics uh, uh, soft, like skin uh, cream, lipstick, uh, sunblock. All these products are mixed with metals, sulfate, aluminum, and other uh, bad elements. When we buy the cosmetics and makeup, we need to be sure, we need to read the ingredients. It should be natural 100%. Step number two, anti-inflammatory food. The first step, we stopped the food, inflammatory food. Second step, we have to eat the anti-inflammatory food. We need to eat food to, to reduce the inflammation in our body. Green leaves. Green leaves, it's, when it's dark leaf, dark green, it's full of antioxidants. Plus, soluble fiber, it's gentle for the colon to be digested, plus vitamins and minerals. Nuts. Nuts uh, are very good source of omega-3. Omega-3, it's anti-inflammatory element, plus good fat for nerve system and the brain, plus fibers, soluble fibers. It will help you to digest and eliminate, plus vitamins and minerals. Olive oil, omega-3 anti-inflammatory. Coconut oil, anti-inflammatory anti-fungi. I'd like to mention something regarding the oil because in the previous page we mentioned that we have to eliminate and avoid the vegetable oil because it contains uh, omega-6 which is inflammatory food. Olive oil and coconut oil are the opposite. They contain omega-3 which is anti-inflammatory. But I need just to underline something. Some people, they use olive oil for cooking, which I don't advise at all. Why? Because olive oil, they, they don't have the resistance against heat. They have resistance only up to 200 degrees, which is not enough. If you would like to cook with oil, you use coconut oil because it has high resistance against heat up to 500 degrees. So you are safe with cooking with coconut oil. Salmon and sardine. Salmon and sardine are rich in omega-3, anti-inflammatory. Plus, they are animals and they contain animal protein. Our body needs animal protein because your body, when you eat it, it will convert the protein into amino acids. And the amino acid, it's the, uh, the building blocks for tissues and muscles. I didn't mention any chicken or meat because chicken and meat in the industrial market are not safe. They are full of antibiotics, they are full of hormones. They injected with hormones and uh, antibiotics to accelerate the uh, production. And when you eat it, those hormones and antibiotics, it comes into your system and it will harm you. So it's better if you eat salmon and sardine because you will get the same benefit from the animal protein. And at the same time, it's clean because it's caught from the ocean or the sea. Antioxidant, it's the third step. So step number one, we eliminate the bad food, inflammatory food. Number two, we eat anti-inflammatory food. Number three, antioxidant food. Antioxidant food is berries, all type of berries, blackberry, blueberry, cranberry, all type of berry, strawberry. They have an element, it's called polyphenol. Polyphenol, it's a miracle. It will expel and get rid of the toxics and metals out of your body. Pomegranate. Pomegranate, it's polyphenol also, but there is a difference between berries and pomegranate. Pomegranate, it contains seeds. So if you have severe ulcer from ulcerative colitis, I don't recommend you eat pomegranate, but you can buy the fruit and squeeze it at home and drink the juice. Don't buy the juice ready to drink from the market because factories, they add sugar as a preservative 
And as we mentioned in the previous page, we need to eliminate sugar completely. So pomegranate, it's polyphenol, but you need to buy the fruit and squeeze it at home, drink the juice. Ashitaba tea. Ashitaba tea, it's tea planted in Japan. Very strong antioxidant green tea. And also it will help your body to renew the dead cells. Olive oil, again, it's anti-inflammatory omega-3. Last step, we need to have some supplements. These supplements, it will help your body to absorb the nutrients from the food and to help your immune system to be improved and to be stronger. We don't need to suppress the immune system. We need to redirect the immune system to the right direction to protect us, not to attack us. Vitamins. Vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 is one of the elements that we produce when we expose ourselves to the sun. But because we live in Canada, we don't have enough sun. So our body doesn't produce enough vitamin D3. Probably most of the people, they have deficiency of D3. So we need to eat it as supplement. Vitamin D3, it's very essential for the immune system to make it stronger. Magnesium. Magnesium, it's very essential for the mitochondria. Under the skin, we have something, it's called mitochondria. We have bacteria living in, uh, as a partner with us in life. We call it as life saver. It will help us to continue in life without sickness. It will protect us. It will help the immune system to function well. It will help the brain to function well. So these mitochondria or this type of bacteria, they need to live. It's like a pet. You need to feed them. So you need to feed them with the right food, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, the right protein, the right fat, and also you need to give them magnesium. Magnesium, it's essential for the mitochondria. B12. As ulcerative colitis patient, you may lose a lot of blood. You may have iron deficiency. To get your body in a position that absorb the iron from food, you have to give it supplement B12. B12, it will encourage and, and support your body to absorb the iron from food. Polyphenol, we spoke about the polyphenol as antioxidant from berries and pomegranate. But also, why not to increase the polyphenol level in our body to expel more toxics and metal from our body by taking extra supplement. So you can go to the pharmacy and buy the polyphenol as a supplement tablets extracted from berries. Kitchen, kitchenware. We have good cookware to use, made of glass or made of clay, if you would like to use it in the oven or stainless steel. Those are safe materials in the cookware. Sta stainless steel, clay or glasses. The bad cookware you have to eliminate and stop using immediately. Teflon, aluminum, plastic. Those three materials, they release toxics and metals in the food slowly. You don't feel it when you eat the meal, but over time, it will be accumulated as toxics in your body. And when the toxic level increase to a certain level, it will aggravate the immune system and it will cause the inflammation. So you have to stop immediately Teflon, aluminum and plastic. And those are the safe ones, glass, clay and stainless steel. Again, cosmetics for ladies, cosmetics should be 100% natural free of aluminum and sulfate and other metals. The method of cooking. Most of the people, they use the stove to cook their food. I don't recommend the stove at all, but you can use it in minimum uh, way. Stove, they kill the food. Why we use the heat when we cook the food? For two reasons. We need to kill the bacteria, we need to soften the fibers to be easy to digest. But when you use the stove 
with high temperature, you kill the food. You lose 60% of the nutrients. What's the alternative? Steam the food. You need to buy a good brand steamer. Big capacity because you will use it every day. Steamer, it will cook the fibers. It will make it soft, gentle for the colon. It will kill the bacteria in a shorter period of time. So we don't lose much. We lose only 15% of the nutrients, which is not much. If you would like to cook on the stove, you use coconut oil because as we mentioned it has high resistance against heat at the beginning of the video i mentioned that we have to stop the grains because it has lectins and gluten okay what's the alternative for source of energy carbohydrates from tuber the roots sweet potato carrots and beets or from fat nuts or salmon or sardine the carbohydrates from sweets sweet potato and carrot and beets it doesn't make you fat and the sugar it's simple sh sugar your body will absorb it and convert it into energy so you don't get fat sweet potato and carrots they have very good element it's called beta carotene which is the yellow color that we see in the sweet potato and carrots Beta carotene, it's essential for the immune system to make it stronger. Beets, because it's dark red, it's full of polyphenol, antioxidant, plus it's rich of vitamin B. Nuts, as we mentioned before, rich in omega-3, good fat, of course, plus sardine and salmon. Very important notice I would like to make. Those two type of energy, we shouldn't mix in one meal. If we would like to eat carbohydrates from tuber, like sweet potato, carrots and beets, we need to mix them with green leaves or green vegetables or other type of vegetables. Or if I'd like to have my source of energy from fat, it's going to be the same thing. Nuts, sardine and salmon mixed with the green vegetables but we don't mix those two elements together the fat and the carbs why because there is a theory it says if you combine carbohydrates with fat you will make a process it's called glycation what's glycation the sugar molecule it will bind with the fat molecule and it doesn't reach the bloodstream it doesn't reach the nerve system it doesn't it doesn't reach the brain and the sugar will oxidate the fat. So instead of taking the benefit of the fat, you will oxidize it and it will turn to a poison in your body. What the reaction of this, what your body reaction, it will make urethry blockage. You will block your urethries. It will be hardened. Uh, atherosclerosis. So never combine fat and carbs. You eat this in a meal and this in a separate meal. This is my, the end of my video. I hope it's beneficial for you. I hope you spread it as much as you can because I'm sure that there's a lot of people they suffer from ulcerative colitis as I did. I was sick for four years with medications and it wasn't helpful at all. I was cured when I changed my lifestyle. I was cured when I changed my diet. I was cured when I know the information and knowledge about the mechanism of the body with the food. So please subscribe to my channel to get my recent videos and share the video as much as you can to spread the information. Please send me any comments i'm ready to answer you i work a lot i work i have two jobs so but i will find the time to answer you back thank you for watching and wait for me for my next video as i promised i'm going to speak about hormone and body weight thank you